Hello everyone, my name is Mariana Gatto. I'm the executive director and co-founder of the Italian American Museum of Los Angeles. A special thanks to IMLA members and sponsors for joining us this evening. We'd also like to recognize the Italian Sons and Daughters of America for their assistance in promoting tonight's event. The concert you'll be enjoying was made possible by a grant from the Los Angeles County Department of Arts and Culture. It was originally scheduled to take place in Los Angeles, in person of course, in June of 2020, but COVID of course changed those plans. What we're attempting to do tonight is no easy feat. When organizing this virtual concert, our first concern was keeping our artists and performers safe. We apologize in advance if there's any technical difficulties uh, this evening. Um, as you can imagine, presenting a virtual concert with social distancing from two different cities uh, presents a number of challenges. And again, we thank you for your patience. Our guest this evening is world-renowned percussionist, singer, dancer, actress, educator, and ethnomusicologist, Alessandra Belloni. Belloni has spent decades researching and preserving the rich traditions of Southern Italian folk rituals and culture and has performed worldwide. She is the artistic director and leading artist of I Giulari di Piazza, an ensemble that specializes in authentic Southern Italian music and performing arts dating back to the 13th century. Belloni is the artist in residence at the Cathedral of St. John the Divine in New York City and the author of the book, Healing Journeys of the Black Madonna. Performing with Belloni is award-winning composer and multi-instrumentalist, John La Barbera. La Barbera is an esteemed educator, author, and lecturer on music history and on folk music, particularly that of the early 20th century immigrants in New York City. He is recognized as one of the first transcribers of Southern Italian folk music in America. And he is the author of the seminal books, Traditional Southern Italian Mandolin and Fiddle Tunes and Italian Folk Music for Mandolin. Also performing tonight is Francesca Silvano. She's a graduate of the National Academy of Dance in her native Rome. Uh, and has been performing and creating original choreography, both in the United States and international. She firmly believes in the healing power of the sacred songs, chants, dances, and rhythms that you'll be experiencing tonight. And finally, likened by critics as the Jimi Hendrix of the violin, Joe Denenzon has worked with Bruce Springsteen, The Who, Sheryl Crow, and the New York City Ballet, among others. Joe is a vocalist, violinist, composer, educator, and author. Uh, thank you for joining us. And before turning it over to Alessandra, we'd like to remind you that the Italian American Museum of Los Angeles offers a free curriculum made possible by the Los Angeles Department of Cultural Affairs that examines the tarantella and is excellent for, for teaching this to students um, and young people. We'll include a link to the curriculum in the comments of this live feed. Alessandra, welcome again. We're so happy to be together, if only virtually. Thank you. I am on now, yes. Great. As you say, this is our first virtual concert of a tarantata. If a year ago someone told me we were going to do this on Zoom, I would have never believed it. So it's appropriate time of the year. We're going to start off the year with the healing power of the tarantella to get rid of the venom from the body, to break the web, and to bring in rebirth and new energy. This is the true origins of our dance. So I want to explain a little bit before we play, especially because in this country there is this notion that the tarantella is a silly wedding dance, but it is not. It's a very ancient, pre-Christian origins, actually, uh, healing trance dance. And I'm very happy that I'm going to do this presentation also with my co-director, co-founder of Iciulari di Piazza, John La Barbera, and I have been playing together for over 40 years, and we started this group in 1980, when he returned from Italy and he had learned all this music. Um, in my research, 
which came from a book called La Terra del Rimorso by Ernesto De Martino, I was really intrigued to find out that this dance originated as music and dance therapy. So I'll just do a very brief historical um, presentation. So, you know, Southern Italy was called Magna Grecia, was part of ancient Greece. So all these uh, traditions and myths and legends from the Greek times were part of our culture. We know that the dance originated as the rites of Dionysus. So my dear Tom, we're going to look at the Pompeii frescoes right now. And I'm going to show you something called La Villa dei Misteri, which is what happened uh, in the pre-Christian times. Women that were initiated in the Dionysus mysteries, um, they had to go to a lifelong initiation before they were, became known as Bacchante. So the dance came from this time. This is the fresco from Pompeii, and it shows the initiation of a woman. But we know there is a myth that we carry, which is the ancient myth of Arachne, the first spider woman. And in the myth, Arachne was this young girl, very beautiful young girl, uh, that was a skilled weaver of Athens, and she uh, challenged the goddess Athena, also goddess of weaving, to a weaving challenge, and Arachne won, and Athena, taken by anger and jealousy, hit Arachne over the head and destroyed her linen in a thousand pieces, and poor Arachne, in depression and humiliation, committed suicide as she hung herself from a tree. And Athena, taken by pity, transformed her into a spider, condemning her to weave her web forever. And we do have an image of our spider from our show, Spider Dance, that I would like to share with you. So I performed a concert production with John and the group called The Dance of the Ancient Spider, and then became known as Spider Dance, where we portray this myth and this legend. And it's believed that the young women of Athens were taken by a suicide mania and committed suicide. And then the prophetess of the underworld, La Sibilla, spoke and said that if they celebrated Dionysus, the god of ecstasy and wine, and their orgiastic rites for Dionysus, they'd be liberated, especially uh, sensually and sexually, and they would be liberated from this form of depression. So the women known as Bacante, celebrated these rites with music, already using tambourine, different instruments, and this tradition continued for centuries. And they lived by themselves in the woods, beautiful, uh, beautiful places in nature, until they were banned by the, the, the Christian church. And during the Middle Ages and the Renaissance, this dance that they did for, for Bacchus came out again but it became known as Tarantella, attributed to the bite of the tarantula, going back to the myth of Arachne. So people know, and they wrote a lot of the books and texts in those times, that mainly women and some men dance around, span around, dressed in white, saying they were beaten by the spider and they had to dance the poison out of the body in a trance. And for centuries they believed it was the venom, until it was found by Robert, uh, Ernesto de Martino and later on Roberto de Simone, important writers, that this was a myth, it was a metaphor, and they suffered from a form of depression known as Tarantismo. So Tarantismo was what afflicted them, depression caused by unrequited love, repression of sexual desires, and sometimes abuse. So their only cure to get out of this was not to take pills or Prozac or things like that. They danced, they danced it out three days and three nights, and the musicians, like us tonight, were the doctors, we were the shamans then, because they had the power of freeing them from this form of depression. So this went on for centuries, and the pizzica continued to be um, performed, played, the rituals. When I started the research in the 80s, there were still some tarantades left in Puglia, and I speak about this in my books, but uh, I was the only woman at that time claiming back the tambourine that was, they used to be played by women, which is the shamanic instrument. So I want to add, before I pass John, to speak a little about, about the music, that I healed myself, dancing this uh, pizzica tarantata, of a cancerous condition, of a women cancerous uh, condition, 
and this was in 1986 and then in 91 again and I've been fine ever since and that's why I take this music farther as a healing tool so that's what I also teach so this is the intention tonight to send out healing to everyone after what's happening in the world we should all be dancing the Fisi Gadarantada right John? but let's do Fisi Tango so I can hear you guys and okay. keep the drum loud in their, uh, in their headphones It's a happy tarantella, one that is done as a social dance, not as a healing trance dance. So now we're going to stay with the theme of the Madonna and the Great Mother. So this piece is a composition of mine. I wrote it for my mother when she passed away. It's a prayer to the Universal Mother. It's called Requiem, Requiem for Mamma Elvira. But it's also done to invoke... Uh, um, a journey into the next world with peace, with light, into the eternity, and also thinking of it as coming as the angel of death. And uh, my mother and other people who have passed away, many, many of them this year, into the next dimension, <coughs> accompanied by the angel and with music. So that's the prayer. It's in Latin, asking for her protection and to pray for us. So this goes out to everyone. I lost a lot of people this year, a lot of grief, and I feel that this prayer is very much needed. Requiem. <laughs>
Thank you, Jill and John. It's beautiful to do this song again together after such a long time, especially at this time. Yeah. Oh, so I'm going to catch a breath and we're going to end with the Tarantellas first, the social dance 
Tarantella Napoletana del Seicento, from the 16th century. Now we're going to the last part of our <coughs> concert online. We made it through difficult technical problems, but I hope out there in Los Angeles, New York, wherever you are, you can hear us well and that the healing power of this dance comes through. We're going to end with this sequence of this music from Puglia used exactly for this, for the bite, called the bite of love, as people who suffer from unrequited love and lost love were also known as Tarantati, and their only cure was the dance. First part is called Tu Bella, uh, dedicated to a beautiful woman with big round breasts. The second part, Tarantella la Garpinese, which is also a very erotic uh, Tarantella about two young lovers, and then ending with the Pizzica Tarantata, the spider dance, which is the one I explained in the beginning. So we're going to say goodbye with this. Oh, there is also another Tarantella in between, Tarantella di San Michele, which is the one to invoke the healing energy, energy of Saint Michael. And we will speak again at the end. And hope if you are there and you have space, dance it out. This is your time to get healed.
Thank you. Violin up.
I want to introduce again my wonderful artists. Uh, we have never performed a pizzica like this in booths and with masks. <laughs> right? This is the first. <laughs> we will always remember it, but thanks to the people in Los Angeles, we have had this experience. So first, grazie Francesca, my one and only, the best Francesca. ballerina, Francesca Silvano, originated from Rome like me, but with a long story in the south of Italy. Also, what we call him the Jimi Hendrix of the violin, originally from St. Petersburg, Russia, with a great history, family history of fantastic musicians that they're passing on to their children. Him and his wife are amazing violinists. She's in the New York Philharmonic, by the way. <laughs> she Joe Dennison. <laughs> and we're very happy to be together again. And my uh, partner for so many years, we go back from 1976 at NYU. That's right. Jean La Barbera, composer, arranger, guitarist, mandolinist, and all of that. And he has actually been the first person to transcribe the pizzicas. He doesn't get credit in Italy, unfortunately, but that is the truth. And Tom Tedesco on the sound. We did yeah, the second, this is our second round, Tom. Thank you very much. Thank you. As we go along, we learn internet problems are not what we would normally have on stage or making a record. So we're all learning, and thank you, and thank you to Marianne, Caroline, mm. and of course Francesca Guerrini for having this fantastic idea, and hope that people that are listening did feel the energy of this dance.
Thank you, Alessandra, John, Francesca, um, Joan, of course, uh, our fantastic uh, sound engineer, Tom Tedesco. We could not have done this uh, without you. Um, you know, clearly this is uh, not the, uh, the ideal way to experience uh, this ancient art, uh, but we are um, nonetheless happy to have had the opportunity until we can uh, present this event again in person. And we very much looking for, uh, look forward to bringing you out to the Italian American Museum of Los Angeles, back to California to, um, to do this again in person when, it's, when it, it is safe to. Um, we have a few questions, Alessandra, if you, if you are ready. Um, yeah. There's been so much uh, feedback from the audience um, communicating just how uh, important this is and how what they experienced with you tonight was uh, the medicine that they have been looking for. So um, much of what we've received from the audience was in the form of compliments. Uh, but I'd like to sh you know, share three questions from the audience. Um, the first is, why do you think that a dance rooted in Italian folklore and mysticism is still so relevant today? Because nothing has changed, especially from the Renaissance Middle Ages to what's going on in the world. Through history, maybe in the Greek times where we read there were times of peace and then Rome, but there has always been a time of uh, violence, depression, repression, but mostly the women, pretty much all over the world, especially in Greece, southern Italy, are the ones who suffer the most repression, mm -hmm. especially sexually, also suffer abuse. Again, you probably have stories in your recent emigration of women that left at 14 years old from Sicily, Calabria, somewhere in the middle of Puglia, married to people, that, the men they didn't know, they didn't love, and that was abuse. And I heard from my students, they have a grandmother that went crazy, that they say she was always depressed and she was crazy. She was a tarantata, they didn't know that. So I think the women have suffered the most through the ages. So today, it's very relevant. With the pandemic, you need to dance it out, you need to sweat the venom out of the body, and you need to release fear and sadness and depression. Now there is a Me Too movement, so women are more in charge of their um, abuse and domestic violence. But uh, I've been writing and doing this way before from the Me Too movement. And in my experience, everywhere I teach around the world, and I do teach around the world a lot when we're traveling, out of my students, I would say if I have 20 students, at least 14 have been abused. And that's the truth from all different parts of the world. Mm -hmm. So women need it today as well. And men need it too, because men have been also dealing with all these problems, plus violence that uh, people of color are suffering. So the Tarantella connects to the Black Madonna. Why? I didn't say in the beginning, because the rites of Dionysus were also done as the Mysteries initiation for the goddess Cibele, Earth Mother goddess, where people, especially women, played the tambourine. So those rituals were interconnected, and Cibele is one of the origins of the Black Madonna. Mm -hmm. I hope that's and, and next, <laughs> next, next, kind of next to the earlier, and I apologize for the echo. Um, we've received a few inquiries as to whether you're familiar with people who are actually, um, you know, practitioners of this dance as a form of therapy. Well, I know everybody that is quite famous now in Puglia. They're playing the pizzica. Mm -hmm. but they do not do the ritual anymore. They do not do the pizzica tarantata. As far as I know, no one is doing this musical exorcism to heal women and people suffer from depression like I've been doing for about 24 years. Somehow, after the book came out, La Terra del Rimorso, and then the film connected to that, doctors went to Salento, Puglia, where it was the last part of Italy where they did it. The doctors started giving people electroshocks, pills, all kinds of stuff. People were embarrassed and they stopped doing the ritual of the pizzica tarantada. When I started in the early 80s, some people did. But as far as I know, no one is doing it. Everyone in Puglia knows who I am because I'm the only one bringing this, this tradition in the world. Because unlike them, and I love them all, my favorite group, Canzoniere, Greganigo, Salentino, I love all of those people, but they don't think that this actual healing trance ritual of dancing on the ground and letting go in the trance is 
uh, relevant to people outside of Puglia. So th I think our blessing being in New York is that we're exposed to everything in the world and culture. So people do, you know, condom bless, santeria, all kinds of rituals from Africa. We have ours, is the pizzica. It still works, it heals today. So as far as I know, no one is practicing the healing trance ritual in Italy. If you find someone that does, please let me know because I would love to collaborate with them. It's not. It's not. <laughs> And then we have a bit more, more. Oops, I lost you. I know. It's I know. Little bit. Um, the two more simple questions were, um, the, the, what was the name of your hand drum that you were playing earlier? And what is the significance of the, you know, the red scarves that um, both you and, and Francesca have, have donned? Is this the drum you're talking about? Probably, right? I believe that's what you're talking about. They yeah. were referring to. A gaval or the daf, it's from Iraq, mm. and somebody brought it to me. And this is supposed to be the face of Mary, Mariam. Oh. Um, it's traveled all over the world, it's, but it's played in a different way in the Sufi. Mm -hmm. But I play like this. Mm. The daf or a gaval. The red scarf is used a lot in the south of Italy. When people dance what they call pizzica de core or a cortin tarantella, the handkerchief, the woman has it to invite the man, to invite the man to dance with her. Well, you know, we only have one solo dancer, but imagine she's inviting a man to dance, and that's an offering, a sign of love. Okay. Mm -hmm. Man accepts the handkerchief, then they, they get together, first dancing. Then, um, red is also used in Italy to symbolize um, contro il malocchio, to send away the evil eye and the evil spirits. And also, when we do the ritual on the floor, we connect the white sheet and the red ribbons also to the menstrual blood. Yeah, and also... But in the tradition in Puglia, and especially Puglia, other places too, it was a music dance therapy and a color therapy. The Tarantati, so a spider when they were beaten in an hallucination with different colors and then they used that color to dance the venom out red was the most dominant mm. fascinating well again alessandra thank you so much um we don't know when there will be a return to normalcy but we are certain that uh when the opportunity presents itself uh, we would love to have you and um, all your very talented artists uh, back with us in person in los angeles we are play there a lot, and I personally yeah, always think that I'm going to move there someday. But be ready, maybe I'll spend half of my life there and half in New York. Just wonderful, about wonderful. Very special in California and very open to what we're doing. So it's a very special audience. Most of my students come from the West Coast. So thank you. Stay safe. Thank you. Have a wonderful rest of the evening, and we look forward to seeing you soon. Grazie, buon anno. Oh, Bonanno. Thank you.